Kim Sitani 2019, problem 9. What is the greatest three-digit positive integer n for which the sum of the first n positive integers is not a divisor of the product of the first n positive integers? So right off the bat, what is it trying to say? What is n? n is the largest three-digit positive integer for which the following criteria are true. What are the criteria? Well, the sum of the first n positive integers is not a divisor of the product of the first n positive integers. What are the first n positive integers? Well, the first n positive integers, what is the least positive integer? Well, that is obviously 1. This goes to 2, goes to 3, goes to 4, all the way to this number of n. That's the first n positive integers. We cannot include 0. Why is that? 0 is considered neither negative or positive. 0 is a very special number, so we cannot include 0 within this set. So the first n positive integers is 1 to n. So what is the sum of this arithmetic sequence? Because they're all incrementing by 1. Well, the arithmetic sequence will be the first number 1 plus the last number times the number of numbers divided by 2. 1 to any number inclusive will always have n numbers. And now from this, we can also find the product. The product 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 all the way to n is obviously a factorial. So this will be n factorial. And as a recap, what is a factorial? 5 factorial, for example, will be the number times the rest of the, of the positive integers all the way down to 1. So yes, this will be the criteria, that this sum is not a factor of this multiple. Well, what is a factor in the first place? Let's give ourselves an easier example to find out what it is. For example, we have 6. What can 6 be divided into? 6 can be 2 times 3. So that means 2 can be multiplied with 3 to form 6, meaning 2 and 3 are factors or, mul or multiples or divisors of 6 or not multiples, only factors or divisors. Divisor is the same thing as factor. Two and three are, divi are divisors of six because they can be multiplied by another factor, such as three, to form such a number. So that is the understanding of what a divisor is of a number. So from this understanding, let's try to see if the summation of this n will be with n factorial. Now, I do not know any neat trick or some very clever deduction to help me find whether the summation of any number n will be a factor of n factorial. So let's just simply plug in each of these answers to find out whether we can deduce that if the answer is indeed matching this criteria. And once we find the answer, that will be our answer because that is the logic process behind it. So let's say n is equal to 995. Well, the summation from 995 all the way down to 1 will be 995 times 996 over 2. And the factorial will be 995 factorial. Simplifying this, we get 4, 9, uh, or we can we could divide it with 996, so it's 498 times 995, and this is equal to 995 times 994 times 993, all the way down to 1. Now, 995 is obviously included within this multiple, but what about 4,998? Well, 498 is less than the greatest bound of 995. Therefore, we can deduce that 498 is indeed within this multiple, because between 1 to 995, 498 is less than the upper bound of 995, so it's within the series. Therefore, 498 can be multiplied with 995 along with other factors to result in 995 factorial, meaning 498 and 995 are necessary components to compose 995 factorial, meaning they are indeed divisors of 995 factorial. Therefore, we're trying to find numbers that are not a divisor, and since the summation of 995 all the way down to 1 is a divisor of 95 factorial, answer choice A would not be a solution. Now let's try answer choice B, when n is equal to 996. And you can apply this for all of them and find out which is the correct answer. So what is summation of 996 from 1? Well, that would be the same thing as 996 times 997 over 2. Simplifying 996 over 2, this is the same thing as 493 times 997. Now, how can now that we have seen this, what is 996 factorial? 996 factorial is just 996 times 995 factorial, all the way down to 1. And 493 is obviously within this factorial. But what about 997? If we can break this down into further multiples that are less than 996, then this will also be a factor of 996. Obviously, this is not divisible by the prime factors 2, 3, 5, and 9. But 9 is a multiple of 3, so obviously we do not even consider that. If this is not divisible by any prime, that means that it is a prime. So how can we test other primes? Well, the other prime is 7. Or we can test the 11, but 11 times 9 is 99. 
11 can now multiply a number to get 7. So 11 is out of the question, and so are the rest of the numbers. So what about 7? 997 divided by 7, well, that will give us 29. So we put here 4, 28, 17. 17 is not a multiple of 7. So 7, 5, 3, and 2 are obviously, neat. all of them are not divisors of 997. So therefore, we can say the 997 is indeed a prime factor. So what does that mean? Well, that means that 997 is not part of this multiple from 996 factorial. Therefore, we have an a number that cannot be used to compose 996 factorial, meaning that the summation from 1 to 996 won't be a divisor of 996 factorial. And since that is the exact criteria, that the summation is not a factor of the multiplication or the factorial, then we obviously have a winner right here, B to be 996. And we see here, wow, that, that actually turned out pretty quick. And you could apply it for the rest of these numbers. And you can find out whether the rest is true or false. But the answer is B. And you might be tempted to say C. Why can't that be C? Why cannot? Because 997 factorial obviously includes 997. And 998 factorial obviously contain a number that came divisible by 2 with 9. And same thing for 999 factorial. So we can be sure to say that B is indeed our answer. And if you're still not safe, you can just try them out on your own apply your understanding into the rest of the three answers and you would get a number that is indeed numbers that can be composing such factorials. So the answer is only B, the solution to this question.